Good morning. Thank you one and all for joining us today to celebrate the one year anniversary of Fred and June Cummer's transformative gift to Missouri S&T. We extend a warm welcome to all of our virtual attendees as well as uh, thank you for joining us for today's event. My name is Steve Roberts and I am the Vice Chancellor of Strategic Initiatives at Missouri S&T and I also serve as the Chief Operating Officer of the Cummer Institute for Student Success, Research, and Economic Development. I'm honored to serve in those positions and I'm honored to be here today with you. It was one year ago today, on a Friday afternoon, that June and Fred made their generous gift of $300 million to our university. It was literally one of those where were you then kind of moments. Their donation is the largest ever to any university in Missouri, public or private. The amount is also the fifth largest to any public university in the United States. Our chancellor, Modigani, who's with us today and who will speak a little later, described Fred and June's gift as transformative. I can think of no better description of June and Fred's generosity. In just one short year, we're seeing dramatic results, and you'll hear about some of those results a little later in our program. At this time, I'd like to introduce some of our distinguished guests who have joined today's event. Fritz Kummer and his wife Tess have joined us. Fritz is the son of June and Fred. Fritz and Tess, thank you for being with us today for this celebration. <laughs> Melanie Brewer and her husband David are also with us today. Melanie is one of June and Fred's daughters, and David is a proud Missouri S&T graduate. So thank you, Melanie and David, for joining us today. <laughs> Joe Lehrer, a member of the Kummer Institute Foundation Board of Directors and a close friend of the Kummer family is also with us, along, as, along with his wife, Sandy. Joe and Sandy, thank you for being with us today. Two very important people who unfortunately could not be with us today, but whose presence is very, very much felt on our campus, are June and Fred. June was not able to make the trip to Rolla today, and as many of you know, Fred passed away last April at the age of 92, and he is greatly missed by many of us. I had the honor of meeting Fred, and would like to tell you a little bit about this remarkable man. He was a successful entrepreneur, a proud and dedicated Missouri S&T graduate, and a generous philanthropist. He graduated in 1955 from the Missouri School of Mines and Metallurgy, as we were known in those days, with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. In 1960, and with three small children, Fred and June took a big risk when they quit their engineering and architecture jobs and together founded the Cummer Construction Company in the basement of their home in Crestwood, Missouri. They grew their company into the future HBE Corporation. Thanks to Fred's innovative design-build approach and June's background as an architect, HBE Corporation became a multi-billion dollar enterprise that designed and built over 1,100 commercial projects throughout the country and employed thousands of people. Fred and June made several generous donations to Missouri s and over the years. They provided the lead gift for the Cummer Student Design Center. They supported the expansion of the Butler Carleton Civil Engineering Building and the construction of Toomey Hall. And they provided the naming gift for the beautiful Fred and June Cummer Garden that's just outside the Hasselman Alumni House. Fred was also heavily involved in his alma mater. He served on the Missouri S&T Board of Trustees. He was a member of the Academy of Civil Engineers and a founding member of the Order of the Golden Shillelagh, which recognizes our most dedicated supporters. He also served the state as a member of the University of Missouri Board of Curators. And in 2011, he was named, the, he was named to the inaugural class of Missouri S&T's Alumni of Influence, our highest honor. In 2020, June and Fred's gift established the Kummer Institute for Student Success, Research, and Economic Development. 
I'd like to now share with you a video of Fred and June. This was created in October 2020 when the Cummers announced their gift to establish the Institute at Missouri S&T. Fred and I have just been very keen on, on education and such. And what I want out of my, all of my grandkids, and now we have four uh, great grandkids, uh, I want some degrees. And, uh, and if they're gonna be kind to their great grandmother or such, they're gonna get them. And uh, we will certainly help them. I went to an unusually fine school. I'm glad I came here. And look at the jewel I, I found in June. It's worked out pretty well. Yeah. For any unit to uh, thrive in this environment, why uh, they've got to be able to identify the brightest, most adaptive. Looking for uh, those um, people that are going to advance the STEM. So STEM should be on everybody's um, uh, understanding of this is a, a select that we, we got to select the people that would best advance this. Raleigh is already in the lead in the public arena and it's what we ought to build on. We, we just got to expose more kids to, uh, so that we, pick, we get the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. There's no reason we shouldn't uh, have um, better institutions in technology than, than we do. And when you really look, there's only one thing that you could, at least for me, that I've ever, that could be built on, uh, and that's Raleigh. Could I just say something? Of course. Both Fred and I realized how we have been so overly blessed our entire life. We certainly have. Thank you, that was touching and wonderful to watch. It's now my pleasure to introduce Melanie Brewer. She's the daughter of Fred and June, and Melanie is going to come up to the stage and say a few words about her parents and their transformative gift. Come on up, Melanie. I'm afraid this might be a little bit repetitive, but that's okay. Um, yeah, my name's Melanie Brewer, and I'm Fred and June Cummer's youngest daughter. I'm here with my husband, David, who is an alumni from Missouri S&T who majored in mechanical engineering. My brother, Fritz, and his wife, Tess, are also here as part of the Cummer, uh, part of the Cummer family. Unfortunately, my mother, June Cummer, could not make it but she is definitely here in spirit. We are all honored. We're so happy and excited to be here today. Congratulations to all recipients of the Fred and June Cummer gift. I know you are using and will continue to use these funds wisely. And Fred is surely smiling down from above, I'm sure. I just wanna add one little aside just for fun. Uh, my dad, I don't know if you know, he was a very avid snow skier and he loved, uh, we would go out to Colorado all the time. And um, so he loved Colorado. So if you get a chance in his spirit, uh, go out there in Colorado, have some fun skiing. Don't study all the time. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you, Melanie. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mo Degani, Chancellor of Missouri S&T, to say a few words. Chancellor Degani joined our university in August 2019 and soon struck up a friendship with Fred and June. Chancellor Degani joined S&T from Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey, just across the river from Manhattan, where he served as Vice Provost for Research, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship. Chancellor Degani, please step forward to say a few words.
Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you very much, Melanie, David, uh, Fred Santis, and, and uh, my good friend, Joe and Sandy. Joe, uh, I am grateful to everything that you did during all the 14 months of conversations and discussions and negotiations with, with Fred. Um, Joe was along the way, every step of the way, and I am grateful for that. Let me um, also mention that um, there, of the seven members of the uh, Commer Foundation Board, three of us are here. I am here, Joe is a member, as well as Dr. Delbert Day. Del, where are you? Yeah, Dr. Delbert Day. Yeah. And the rest are watching this uh, activities on, on Zoom. So um, I will have my report to read, my progress report, the first um, anniversary report, which will be repeated every year uh, going forward. But as Steve mentioned, I met Fred shortly after joining SNT. I met with him weekly and over the course of the next 14 months, we hammered out a commer plan, the commer plan, to build on our foundation of academic excellence to have an even greater impact on SNT and beyond. I know Fred is here and watching us and frankly I'm nervous. I was nervous every time I met with Fred uh, it was, you know, um, after Fred actually bestowed uh, the gift, Fred and June, on us, I met with them every Saturday from 10 o'clock. Often I would present my report and, you know, Fred would tell me what we were doing well and uh, I would get a lashing on what we should have been doing instead of what we did and, you know, but that was, that was a part of it. And, I was nervous from the time I stepped in the house until I stepped out of the house. And I'm nervous now because I know he's looking down on us, down on us right now. But uh, Fred, I think you will be pleased as I will later on report uh, the, uh, the progress of the first year. But honestly, I do wish that Fred were with us today to see and meet many of the students who are benefiting from his and June's generosity. These include our 462 Comer Vanguard scholars, many of whom are on Zoom and many of whom are here, who are first year students who received the Vanguard scholarships to aid them in their pursuit of innovative STEM degrees. Many of them are with us in person and many of them are on Zoom. And I want you to know that every single one of those students have written a thank you card to Fred and June, and I have every single one of them, and I will give them to Fritz and Melanie today uh, uh, for, for uh, June to see. Um, how I wish Fred was alive and I could present him with the 462 thank you cards and the pictures of the students, many of whom had said that had it not been for this scholarship, there was no way I would have been able to pursue my college education. Many of them, of them have seen, you will see that. Um, I, I, it, was, it was frankly a joy and often, to be honest about it, I was in tears when I was reading these cards and I know you will as well. We also have our inaugural class of Commer Innovation and Entrepreneurship Doctoral Fellows, we call them INE Fellows, who received full stipends for their PhD programs in STEM. These INE Fellows are pursuing degrees and, re and doing research that will lead to future innovation and entrepreneurship ventures. This first year, we have 10 INE Fellows but we soon plan to have as many as 100 INE fellows on campus at any given time. So INE fellows, doctoral students, and the 20 endowed chairs and professors that Commer Gift has enabled 
for us, quality of recruiting the faculty as well as the doctoral fellows, as well as the undergraduate scholarships, the quality surpasses expediency. So we will not lower our bar in order to just meet the numbers. And I've told Fred this many times, and he agreed with it. So this year, we have 10 of them. But of course, it was late when we were aware of the gift to make the broad national announcement for it to get the PhD students on board. Next year will be different. But we soon plan to have as many as 100 INE fellow on campus at any time. I want to thank all of those students for coming to SNT and following in the footsteps of one of our most innovative graduates, Fred Kummer. Let's give them all a round of applause. When June and Fred made their generous donation, they also gave us a mandate. We call it the mandate. Fred described it as having three components. Elevate Missouri s and establish broad STEM outreach, and ensure economic impact in our region, our state, and our nation. In a few minutes, I will share more about how we are carrying out the, that mandate. But first, I would like for us all to hear from a few of the students who are benefiting from June and Fred's gift. I ask Steve to return to the lectern to introduce our student speakers. Steve? Thank you, Chancellor Degani. Our next speakers are students in the Kummer Vanguard Scholars Program and the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Doctoral Fellow Program. These competitive programs established through a portion of the Comer gift provide opportunities for qualified and deserving students to pursue college degrees in the STEM fields. Our first speaker is Catalina Ortega. Catalina is a Comer Vanguard Scholar from St. Robert, Missouri, and is studying aerospace engineering. It's my pleasure to introduce Catalina Ortega. Hello. Um, thank you all so much for joining together today. I've realized recently that I am blessed with so many opportunities because in addition to the amazing gift that the Kummer family has given to all of us, I, am all, I also have this special opportunity to personally thank you um, for this donation on behalf of all of the donees. You will be pleased to know the Vanguard Scholarship Program is the most lively group I have ever been honored to be a part of. It is truly an experience I will look back on for the rest of my life. I thank the Kummer family for making that possible. I'm sure all the kids would, be have, would have been honored to have met Fred in person, and I'm sure he would be proud to see the collaborative discussions and activities we take part in every week. On behalf of all of us scholars, we want to thank you for this opportunity you have given all of us. As we know, the school gives us enough challenges to worry about. We thank you for helping us lift the burden of tuition. Um, school should be our number one focus without having the added stress of costs, so thank you. Um, I also want to share how I feel um, about this gift, sorry. <laughs> I think um, it's not only an investment in the individual person, but an investment in the future of the whole world. These students will go on to graduate and to be researchers, scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs that will change the future, all thanks to your contributions. I also want to share how great it felt for someone to show they believe in me personally and in my future. When I found out I was a recipient, I almost, it was almost like hearing, I believe in you, here's some help, and that you're on the right track. It was a validation that I think all of us needed in the vulnerable times of adjusting to college. I promise this gener generosity is not something any of the Vanguard scholarship scholars will ever forget. I hope to somehow repay the favor and try to be as generous as the Cummer family and have an impact on someone's life as you did on ours. So thank you. <laughs> mm. 
<clears throat> Catalina mentioned uh, how lively and energetic the Cummer Vanguard scholars were. Uh, I, along with many of my colleagues, uh, interact with and, and try to inspire and entertain those Cummer Vanguard scholars every Wednesday night from 7 p.m. to 8.30. And I can tell you without question, they are a lively and energetic group keeping us on our toes. So thank you for that, Catalina. Our next Cummer Vanguard scholar is from Milstad, Illinois, and is studying architectural and civil engineering. And it's my pleasure to introduce Katherine Johnston. Katherine? Thank you all for coming today. Um, as a Cummer Scholar recipient, I've had the privilege to be a part of this amazing program. It is truly inspiring just how much effort everyone has put in to make this dream a reality. This program is not just about money or the generous donations, but teaching students leadership and allowing us to grow ourselves. We are prompted to think and harness our creativity. I know personally it has taught me to be more confident in my abilities and go for my dreams. Being chosen as a scholar was truly as Catalina had put it, um, it shows that you, it gives you confidence in yourself. It gives you a reason. It proves that you were not only accepted into this college, but also that you are capable and you can do whatever you imagine. As Robin Sharma once said, gratitude drives happiness. Happiness boosts productivity. Productivity reveals mastery and mastery inspires the world. I couldn't have said it better myself. Your generosity to this university and Cummer Scholars is truly going on to inspire the world. It is because of you someday we might colonize space or be reliant on wave energy to power this very building, or even using our flying Teslas to make a four wheel run. It is because of you. You've shown us the possibilities are, are endless with a little dedication, passion, and hard work. For me personally, it has made coming to this great university possible. I'm an out-of-state student, so it was a little more expensive for me, and this gift made it possible for me to be here. It is the bur financial burden and stress so much. It has impacted each and every scholar, and I know we are all beyond thankful for everything, your time and effort into making this uh, happen. I know the Cummer Student Design Center is amazing. I am a part of the Solar House design team here on campus and have gotten familiar with the building and other design teams. We created a space for students to go and make their visions come to life, giving us a creative outlet for us to change the world. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. As a Cummer Scholar and SNT student, that is exactly what we plan to do, and you have helped make that possible. Thank you to the Cummer family. Thank you, Catherine. It is now my honor to introduce our two Cummer Innovation and Entrepreneurship Doctoral Fellows. Our first INE Fellow is Logan Wilcox. Logan graduated from Missouri S&T in May 2020 with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Computer Engineering and minors in Mathematics, Electrical Engineering, and Aerospace Studies. This June, Logan began his PhD studies in Electrical Engineering. It's my pl pleasure to introduce Logan Wilcox. Logan? Good morning. Uh, as Dr. Roberts said, I ended up leaving Missouri s and in May of 2020, graduating with my bachelor's degree in computer engineering, and I honestly thought I'd never be back. Um, I was slotted to be commissioning into the United States Air Force, uh, but as everybody knows, COVID has an interesting way of affecting our lives, and the, I ended up separating from the Air Force, and I lost my sense of direction and what I was going to be doing with my future. However, it was my time here at s and and the professor that I was able to work under, Dr. Donnell, in the Electrical Engineering Department in the Microwave Sensing Lab, that brought me back here. It was her numerous opportunities as an undergraduate, as my time as an undergraduate, and her opportunity that she gave me to come back and pursue higher education with a PhD program. And it was because of this and our discussions that we had shortly after I had separated from the Air Force that brought me back here and that ensured that this is the university that I want to be a part of. 
And it was through this fellowship that that dream or that goal of getting that PhD came into fruition. And while the financial burden removal is amazing and having a fellowship on the level of that equivalent to NASA here at SNT through this donation and through this transformation or transformative gift is unbelievable. And I just want to let the family know that the money's already being put to good use. I had the pleasure of being able to speak at the NDT 2021 conference last week, and we are able to share our success and where our lab is going here at SNT with the rest of the NDT community in aerospace, which includes you know, NASA, Lockheed Martin, Boeing. They're very well aware of the success that Missouri SNT is capable of and where we're going in the field in the future. So I just want to say thank you again, and God bless to everybody. So. Thank you, Logan. Our final student speaker today is Aiden Brooks. Aiden earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Missouri S&T in May of this year. And this summer, he began his pursuit of a PhD in Mechanical Engineering as a Kummer Innovation and Entrepreneurship Doctoral Fellow. It's my pleasure to introduce Aiden Brooks. Aiden. I am a believer in science fiction. Not the cheesy kind, which often just hand waves away the known laws of the universe with some futuristic technology, though that is often entertaining, but the science fiction which paints a plausible portrait of the near future. A future with permanent colonies on the moon and Mars, and a bustling asteroid mining industry, um, and routine commuter travel to orbit. I am inspired by stories where humanity is not bound to a single planet, but has instead harnessed our innate ingenuity and has built outwards and upwards. That future is fast approaching, and I want to do my part to make that dream a reality. I believe additive manufacturing will play a vital role in realizing that future. Already, companies like Relativity Space and Ursa Major are working on 3D printing rockets and rocket components, everything from the fairings to the fuel injectors. In fact, Relativity Space will soon be launching its first fully, uh, full-size, fully 3D printed rocket. Consequently, I am eager to begin my research into adaptive controls for additive manufacturing. As many of these technologies are still in their infancy and adolescence, there are a huge number of fascinating problems in urgent need of solutions. Through my work with the Center for Aerospace Manufacturing Technologies here at Missouri S&T, I believe I can help find some of those solutions. I believe our research can make a difference to the automotive industry, the aerospace industry, the private space industry, and hopefully the future. The formation of the Kummer Institute was one of the deciding factors in convincing me to pursue my research here at ST because it represented both an investment in the future and a commitment to changing the world, both of which speak strongly to me. I feel certain that the opportunities afforded to me through the Institute as a Kummer INE Fellow will help me to someday leverage my research to affect the greatest possible impact. I am grateful to the Kummer family for making my research possible through their generosity, and I am honored to have been selected as one of the inaugural Kummer INE Fellows. Thank you, Fred and June. Thank you, Aiden. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Chancellor Dragani back to the stage to conclude today's program. How about those moving testimonials from our students? Well, let me give them another round of applause. Thank you all. 
Um, I also like to uh, recognize the uh, our uh, members of the board of uh, trustees, Commer Board, that are on Zoom. Uh, that includes uh, Dr. Bud Peterson, who graciously agreed to chair the board uh, after Fred. Uh, Bud is on online, and Dr. Martin Jeske who used to be a chancellor of this university and now he is in West Lafayette, Indiana, He's retired president of uh, Purdue University. Bud Peterson is the retired president of Georgia Tech. And then Joan Woodard, who's also a member of the university's uh, board of trustees. Um, and then finally, Gary Havner, a, a, a wonderful benefactor of this university where the Havner Center is named after him. And uh, all four of them are on Zoom uh, listening to this conversation. So with that, I'd like to read my uh, annual report to Fred and June. And uh, you will hear at the end that uh, this letter will be archived in our uh, Cisco Centennial time capsule to be opened at our bicentennial uh, anniversaries uh, 50 years from today. Dear Fred and June, what a year it has been. I think you would be very pleased with the progress we have made since you donated your generous gift to us one year ago today. I miss reporting our progress to you every Saturday, but I continue to keep your mandate at forefront of my mind in every decision we make related to Comer Institute. Today, I share with you the first of what will be our annual report on the Comer Institute for Student Success, Research, and Economic Development. Every year on the anniversary or your gift, the Comer Day, I will present this report to our campus community. We also plan to pass this tradition along to future chancellors of this wonderful university so that 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 years from today, all who hear this message will know the lasting impact of your incredible gift. First of all, Fred, I wish to report that the Commer Institute Foundation Board of Directors is in very capable hands. In August, Dr. Bud Peterson, a board member with whom you interacted several times, was selected to succeed you as chair of the board of directors. As you know, Bud is the region's professor of mechanical engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology and served as Georgia Tech's 11th president from 2009 to 2019. His experience leading Georgia Tech will serve us well as he guides the Commer Institute Foundation Board. Dr. Steve Roberts continues to lead the Commer Institute as Chief Operating Officer. He is overseeing our progress on your threefold mandate to elevate Missouri s and have broad STEM outreach, and have economic impact. And now I will share some of the highlights of the progress we have made in each area. First, we are working to elevate s and through academic and research initiatives. We have established our new college, the Commer College of Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Economic Development. This college, named in your and June's honor, is not your normal business school. The Commer College is a new kind of college designed for the mid-21st century to prepare future tech-savvy entrepreneurs, innovators, inventors, and business leaders. In other words, people who will hopefully follow in your footsteps. A national search is underway for a dynamic, innovative leader to serve as the founding dean of this college. The Commer College will build on our university's strength in STEM fields and on foundational degree programs of business, economics, engineering, management, information science and technology, and systems engineering. Each of these programs is exceptional in its own right and each 
has all the elements in place to create the launching pad for a world-class college. We will build on these areas of excellence with new degree programs and offerings. By this time next year, we anticipate this college to be fully thriving. In addition, we are establishing four new centers of excellence in ex to accelerate Missouri s and research activities. Each center builds on existing strength and reflects one of the research priorities of our nation. Our new centers of excellence are in the following areas. Advanced and resilient infrastructure. Resource sustainability. Advanced manufacturing and artificial intelligence and autonomous systems. We are close to closing the deal on one of these center director searches. And we have two other searches that are in the final stages as well. With these and all other searches, we are focused on attracting the best of the best of the best of the best, just as you have asked us to do. Our goal is to elevate research and development that can move from the lab to the marketplace and create social value and social mobility for people of our region and our state. Ours will be industry-inspired research and research-inspired education. In that light, on the academic side, we are establishing 20 endowed chairs and professorships, as you are fully aware. Searches are underway for two of them. The Commer Endowed Chair of Business and Information Technology and the Commer Endowed Chair for Nuclear Engineering and Radiation Science, with more searches to follow. Our mission to elevate SNT is also benefiting from our new Commer Scholarship and Fellowship programs. We launched our Commer Vanguard Scholars Program to attract and support the best and the brightest freshmen in STEM degree programs. This fall, our first class of Commer Vanguard Scholars, totaling 462. This is great progress on our goal of bringing 500 Commer Vanguard Scholars to campus each academic year. These students, once again, in your words, are the best of the best of the best of the best, and benefit from your generosity in the form of a scholarship and additional support and programming to help them become the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. A fellowship program for PhD students, which as you recall, is called the Commer Innovation and Entrepreneurship Doctoral Fellowship, brought brought in 10 PhD students this fall. Our goal is to grow that number each year so that we have up to 100 INE fellows on campus at any given time. Each of these INE fellows is focused on innovation and entrepreneurship in the STEM disciplines. Fred, your and June's generosity has set an example for many other alumni and friends to follow. Here are just a few examples of how your gift has led to even further support for s and Anthony Steinmeier, who grew up in Rolla and whose father taught economics at Missouri School of Mines, read about your gift. He was so inspired by your generosity that he donated $20 million to establish a chair in economics to be named after his father. The elder Steinmeier passed away in 1963, and his son of 87 years old donated $2 million. After reading about the Commer College of Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Economic Development. Rosemary Kelker also read about your gift. Her late husband was an engineer, but not a Rollo engineer. However, throughout his career, he worked with s and graduates and was always impressed by their, by their ability 
to roll up their sleeves and get the job done from day one. In other words, he knew about our reputation for graduating street-ready engineers. She donated one and a half million dollars to create a new scholarship program to support the students in chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, and aerospace engineering. Our vision to create a new arrival distri district to become our welcoming front door to the university inspired several donors to continue to our $18 million campaign. These include Tim and Kay, Kay Bradley, Mike and Joyce Bittner, Gary and Judy Havner, Jeff and Pat Sheets, Steve and Betty Solentrop, Tom and, and Carol Voss, and multiple others. All of these gifts were inspired either directly or indirectly by yours and June's generosity, and all of them will help further our goal to elevate SNT on many levels. We are also making great strides in the second part of Commerce Mandate to establish broad STEM outreach. There is a need for better and more widespread STEM education, as you know. We have established the Commerce Center for STEM Education and brought on board the center's founding director, Courtney Jones. I think I saw Courtney in here today. She will oversee the center's engaging programming for students in grade K through 12 and for teacher development. Our initiatives to increase STEM outreach include invigorating our summer camp for pre-college students, even at the elementary school level, launching a mobile STEM lab that will travel throughout Missouri starting in the spring semester, hosting field trips, after school programs, community outreach events, teacher conferences and workshops, and research experiences for both teachers and students, and providing tutoring for K through 12 students throughout the state. We expect great things from this center, and it will certainly broaden STEM knowledge throughout our area and state and generate greater interest in STEM education among young people throughout Missouri and beyond. We have already begun describing the center in the proposals to leverage additional support for STEM outreach. In addition to these efforts, we have established our army of champions, made up of our own successful students who return to their high schools to promote the importance of STEM education and perhaps even brag a little about the benefits of an SNT degree. This important outreach effort also benefits from the support of the Commer gift. Last but certainly not least, Fred, our third goal is to ensure economic impact in our region and state. There is no doubt that your transformative gift is doing that already. Your gift is critical for our effort to develop a statewide ecosystem of a small and medium-sized manufacturers that can benefit from the knowledge and expertise of our faculty and doctoral students, as well as from the information sharing that occurs among manufacturers. We are calling this effort the MME, which stands for Manufacture Missouri Ecosystem. In a sense, the ecosystem already exists, but it is not integrated. That's where s and and Commer Institute come in as the connector and as the hub for these manufacturers. We are in the early stages of developing a manufacturing technology and innovation campus across Interstate 44 north of the main s and campus. You know exactly where that is, Fred. The first building, called the Missouri Protoplex, will serve as the research and development hub for manufacturers across the state. The Commerce Institute Foundation Board of Directors has, have, has approved $50 million in matching funds to go towards the 105 million construction project. 
This significant commitment by the board of directors has already led to a $5 million contribution from the state of Missouri, directly to Missouri s and And we believe it will soon lead to significant additional support towards our goal. Once again, your foresight and vision are already paying dividends towards our effort to enhance the regional and state economies. We have other major construction projects in the planning stages, as you are aware, all of which benefit from your gift and your vision for s and They include the Innovation Lab, which will become the destination for students of every major to come together to create, to make, to invent, to brainstorm. The Innovation Lab will be a playground for possibility thinkers. A welcome center where visitors to our campus will enter the world of s and in a new immersive, experiential way with interactive display and real world connections. A new building that connects two of our major research building, Astronomist James Hall for materials research and engineering research lab. This will create the largest engineering research complex on our main campus. Here is where many of the new endowed professors and Comer i &E fellows will have the space for their research. This facility will also provide room to grow as we continue our mission to significantly increase our enrollment of graduate students. Your gift is also providing new support for s and researchers and instructors in the form of seed grants to spare major research proposals or to develop innovative approaches to teach, to teaching and learning. These seed grants and the future proposals they will engender will lead the, to further innovations to advance the economic development of our region, our state, and our nation. Your gift also allowed our university to surpass our $150 million goal of the Rala Rising fundraising campaign, which began in 2016. Thanks to your generosity and the generosity of many others, we surpassed that goal with a record $423.4 million raised. Fred, you encouraged us all to think big and you and June backed it up with the largest charitable gift in Missouri history. You have significantly raised our sights and our supporters' confidence in our university. I thank you for believing in us, for seeing the potential in Missouri s and and for pursuing and for pushing us to be better. With these thoughts in mind, I respectfully submit to you the first annual report of the Comer Institute for Student Success, Research, and Economic Development. Fred, please know that all of us who are serving at the Comer Institute in one capacity or another, in one capacity or another, know well that your shadow will cast tall and far in time and in space. We also know that all of us today and future faculty, staff, administrators, and students will often turn to you in our thoughts and find encouragement and hope as we traverse the Comer course by reference to your directions. So it is with honor, Fred and June, that we all thank you for your wisdom and for your generosity that will enrich the lives of our students and faculty for generations to come. We know as we look to our next 150 years that s and future will be even more relevant and impactive than its illustrious past 150 years that produced scientists and engineers uh, the ranks of Fred Comer, uh, Rachel McNutt, Daniel Jackling, Carl Hasselman, and many others. The Comer Institute that you created 
has an unlimited potential to impact lives for the better through STEM outreach and education. And that inspiration will also remain the responsibility of all who serve here. In conclusion, I want you to know that a copy of this report signed by me will be included in the Cisco Centennial Time Capsule that will close next month as part of our 150th anniversary celebration activities. My hope is that 50 years from now, when the Missouri s and community of 2071 gathers to celebrate our bicentennial and to open the time capsule, many of our inaugural Comer Vanguard scholars and Comer INE fellows will be on hand to witness the occasion and to tell the newest class of scholars and fellows about this day, October 9, 2021. Rest in peace, Fred. Sincerely, Mo. Thank you, Chancellor Degani. This concludes today's ceremony, celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Transformational Comer Gift. I now invite you all to head to the All Good Bailey Stadium to attend the Minor Alumni Association's tailgate luncheon. The tailgate will continue until 1 p.m. when our Missouri S&T Miners will play the Truman State Bulldogs in our homecoming game. Thank you very much. <laughs>